What do you guys see us? Welcome back to the Gojiri Karate Centre. We're lucky we have Brian in the dojo tonight, so he's alive, he's back, and uh, we will do a little bit of bunkai, and we will run through the kata, seesaw shin. Now, for some schools, this kata is around about maybe junior black belt, senior black belt grading kata. For some schools, it's a higher grade kata, maybe third or fourth dan. In some schools, it might be even a fifth or sixth dan kata. As always, do, do what your sensei says, okay? So if you're learning the kata online and learning the bunkai online, and you go to the dojo and sensei says, uh, you need to practice this first or that first, then please adhere to what your sensei is asking. All right, so without further ado, let's go. Okay, so the first three movements are basically identical. Double hand block, retract, strike, and back. Hey, Brian, let's go. So our first and probably our most basic idea is that my partner is attacking, he's punching, I block, and I'm striking. Um, I wouldn't be striking for his uh, sternum. I would choose soft targets. So... Because I am not a 100% dedicated martial artist whose entire life and obsession is martial art, I have to choose softer targets for uh, weapons like knife hand and things like that. And that's a lot of people in this day and age. A lot of people are not 100% students of the martial art and are totally dedicated to it. So... You've got to apply a little common sense, right? Back again. One, two. Soft target. Aim for the throat. So this is one basic bunkai. We can now build on this idea that punch with that hand. One, and again, two, and again, three. And now we have three knife hand attacks. Yes, I doubled and repeated my second and third one on the same side, but it's just the idea of variation. All right, some crazy ideas you can think of for the bunkai would be ideas like punch one, one, two, and tacking up into the armpit. So let's go left hand, please. So punch one, and tacking up into the armpit. So I know there are a whole bunch of people who like the pressure point stuff, and if you touch the person, then some weird stuff happens. Um, but what's interesting about attacking up into the armpit is that it's not so much a collection of pressure points only, but it's also a large collection of blood vessels. It's called the brachial plexus. And by attacking the brachial plexus, you're attacking the blood system as well as the nerve system. I studied anatomy, so I found attacking various spots on the human body rather interesting from an anatomical point of view. Um, will it drop my, my opponent? Probably not. <laughs> okay, but it's fun nonetheless. So, we've gotten through the first three moves. We move on. One, two. So, this movement here, scooping up, can be very similar to Tensho Kata. One, two, or Seisan Kata has something similar. Just... Here you're dropping with the arms pulling. And it can also be similar because of this movement in Seyunchen. So think about it as a combination of those ideas. As he attacks and he grabs on with two hands, instead of trying to sink him and to pull him down, I'm actually going to try and float him up. So I'm going to just, we're going to backpedal a bit. So the hands are here. You're going to slide the hands in, press up, move him forward, then pull down. Then you can move on with the cutter or with something logical. Right. We always ask the question from a, that would be the basic bunkai. From a more pragmatic point of view, why would a person grab on with two hands? What is their intention? Okay. Is he going to shake me? Is he going to do something else to me? How does it work? The next thing is, why two hands? If he's grabbing on with two hands, why do I have to deal with this problem with two hands? Maybe I can use it to my advantage by grabbing this way, pressing up, 
pulling down on this side. And look at what it does to his structure. So if I do that with this hand and I take this hand and I just pull down, then life becomes um, really cool. Okay? So he grabs on. I would rather err uh, on taking my opponent down that way. Um, it works a lot easier. The other ideas behind it are should he grab with two hands? I've got to worry about a knee and a headbutt. So if I maneuver myself, Brian, please stand this way. Uh, his headbutt and his knee are going to come down the center line. If I maneuver myself, I'm taking that myself out of that equation. And now we can take him down. Oh, I like the pony, Brian. All right, so basic idea, float and then step back, crank, drill the person with a good solid kick. Um, or you can step through and use the ridge of the arm attacking the neck. So this is a basic idea. I'm a little bit more advanced. Why two hands? Why are they grabbing with two hands? Asking lots of questions. What's his intention? And if he's just going to try and shake me, well, that's one thing. But if he's going to try a head, butt, and knee by redirecting, repositioning myself, I'm getting off that line. Now I can grab the hair, I can take the person down. We get to the movements that are pretty unique to distortion cutter. They help define the cutter. And these are these movements 45 and round. Now, over the years, I've done this many different ways, and I'm probably not doing it 100% the same way as prescribed by the OGKK. I often tend to bring my hand up sooner and pull and drop. And if I was to go this way, this hand is coming back to the chamber in a vertical position, not in a horizontal position. This hand is here, and my head is turned. The reason for this is all because of the proximity to your opponent. Hi, Brian, let's go. So, this idea on its own, Brian is punching Jordan, block, and strike, and I'm breaking the line, and I'm looking 45 degrees along with him. Okay, should he attack again? we can now move to the next position. So this is one way of linking the two. We do that again a little bit slowly. So right hand attacks, block, strike, so you're hitting him in the groin. The next attack comes, one, two, and three. All right, obviously there are a couple of faults in it because the moment I block here and I'm holding his hand this side, that elbow is coming back, his arms coming back. My only hope is that the shot to the groin is going to create some kind of effect that's going to take his mind off of this. All right. And then as he attacks, one, two, I'm pressing and I'm just trying to push him down on the ground. I tend to do it a little differently in my dojo. So he punches Jordan. Now move to the inside, redirect and move to the outside. So I'm working on the same arm. So we go again. One, two, there's the hikyuke. Reason for hikyuke is to help lift the arm and bring it back. Step through, pull. Now, I'm not strong enough and have big enough hands to pull this hand back and have this wrist bent. But that's the general idea. Where every time you see the palm up, you should imagine that you're trying to bend the wrist. I have a little bit more training to do. I know that. Okay? But the idea of pulling and cranking, this is important. So when we do this particular bunkai, the most basic bunkais are usually block and strike. And then you can also do punch one, one, and step through. All right. There are more bunkai that require more turning. And the reason for that is to create the throw. So a lot of people place a lot of emphasis on the throwing technique associated with this and the hip movement. 
Okay, so let's go left hand, please, Brian. Punch two down. One, two. Now you've created a fulcrum, leverage, and your opponent goes over. This is all good and well in a hypothetical world, but most of the time he's just going to step over it. Okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll show you. Punch again. Left. One, two. Step over the leg. And now I've lost it. So now all I have is that downward momentum. Okay? So that, that helps me carry him down. So don't place too much emphasis on the leg work um, in terms of throwing, but more importantly, place emphasis on getting the arm in the right position and affecting his body from his hip through his shoulder. So let's go right side again. Chudan. Uh, Chudan. So when I'm here... Place emphasis on the idea of rotation and pressing down. Therefore, I've affected his body. All right? If I have done that and I happen to have a leg pressing down, I am starting to destabilize him. What's more important is that I, I really want to be able to push my opponent into the ground face first. Next move in the kata. Punching over the shoulder. Elbow striking forward, elbow striking back. And it is coupled with that move. So what I would generally say for most people, the basic bunkai is, Brian, please come. Mind the microphone, please. He grabs over the shoulders. You tuck the bum in. You lift, drop, pump him with the elbow, pump him with the punch. It really is a great bunkai. Not really. Um, the problem is quite self-evident. When the person does this, and I do this, his hands are here. And any good fighter is immediately going to take you and put you in the rear naked. And then it's going to be that much harder to deal with, if you can deal with it at all. So in terms of that, I like to think of this hand as a holding hand comes up and it's holding. And so in holding, I can now drill this arm, which is going to create some space. I've also got the head and the hips, maybe. That's one idea. So maybe I'm holding his arm this way. The next idea, slightly more advanced, is that when I bring this hand up to do the punch, I grab his arm this way. So as my arm wants to come up for the punch, this is stopping him. Brian, try to go to choke. He, he's really got to get around my hand. I can put my hand there. I'm protecting my neck a little bit. And I'm raising the guard, up, raising his arms up. And I've still got something there. So this is a little bit of protection. Now, when I add this hand in, I've got big vacant space here. That's where I'm going to step through. And I'm going to put my hand through the top and hyperextend. So grab on again, Brian. I'll go the other hand. Round. Hyperextend. Let's go sideways. Grabs on. Round. And push his head back. Have the sand feeling that it's pulling down. Hey. So it's kind of that the two movements are coupled together is my idea for a good solid basic bunkai because one two now some people may do that way where you turn on your axis uh, again it's just a question of what does your dojo do or your sensei ask of you and you do what they say the bunkai for this movement as a singular movement I remember as a young junior black belt brown belt junior black belt we had to do this movement fast. So it was four, four directions, very fast, very hard, very powerful. And the idea was to develop swift, powerful movements. Today, I tend to teach it a little bit more slow. When we do our basics, we tend to do it a little bit more fast. And the most basic bunkai is still one of the best bunkai that is out there. It's simply block smash. Okay, Brian? So, 
Brian is going to do, we're going to use a low punch so that we can exhibit a certain amount of control. So right hand, low punch, one, one. Step in, block down, strike. It's that simple. It's one of those things where if the attack is coming low, all right, if it happens to be a Maigiri, same idea, block, strike. And you can see the target is immediately on the chin. The follow through when I was a child was, let's do my Gary again. One, two, three. That was our follow through. I still think it is incredibly basic, very simple, and very effective bunkai. I like that one. I've never bothered trying to work out too many other variations, uh, but I've seen a few. So I'll give you an idea. He grabs my hand, I block. And I strike. Another interesting bunkai. Grab this hand. Oh, no, no, no. So this works ideally right to left. So you can cross over, block, and strike. It's a very useful bunkai as well. If you wish to show something a little different, a little bit of a variation. Okay. There's, hmm, yeah, we'll keep it simple and we'll keep it over there. Two variations of the bunkai for this movement. Obviously, next movement, block, kick, and strike. And the ideas here are basically, I think this is where Miyagi Sensei took the kick, land, elbow idea for Gixar H from, um, I think he took it from Sisor Shankata and built it into Gixar H. So when you practice your Gixar H, you naturally become good at this. And the basic idea, again, it's very, very simple. He attacks, I move to the inside. I block, grab, kick, elbow, and if I need to, strike with the hand, okay? Let's go one punch. A lot of people will do one, two. So the idea, if I kick him in the groin, he's going to come forward. I'm going to hit through his face, all right? So this is when you see most people do the kata, one, two. And that's what you see. What you see is what you get. From a tactile perspective, something that people may consider. Punch one, one, two, three, four. Hitting up, down. Now, that downward hit is associated with your stance. Okay? How's it feel, Brian? Okay. This? Not too bad. Not too bad. <laughs> um, we underestimate the effect of dropping the elbow onto the solar plexus, onto the sternal bone. Sorry, microphone. Onto the, the, the sternum and trying to hit down directly onto it. The other options are, obviously, if you raise the chin, you're striking or dropping that elbow into the neck. It's very, very useful in places where we often hit a, a snag. Um, sometimes we're like, well, the person's got too much power. So if we had to go off on a tangent quickly, Brian goes back to the point where he's grabbing me. I'm trying to wrestle with him. So that... Uh, that, that infamous thing called the spirit breaker, you know, you kick him in the groin, then up and down, or up and using this elbow to dig, that, that I can try and find a way out. Let me use the other hand. So, um, yeah, I want to use this hand, so kick, elbow, dig. So we've got these digging motions also in this cutter to help us clear. Now, I've, I've cleared my, my problem, and i am effectively outflanked my opponent. But the idea that if he's grabbing on, the spirit breaker might be the grab, the hick you care, kick him in the groin, in the groin, elbow, press, attack. Maybe that we're in the clinch and we have close quarters fighting, and he's trying to hook and to hit me with something around. 
Okay, just bringing that elbow up, stopping him as, as I move in, pressing that elbow in, attacking me. As I do it, so I might be standing, he takes the hook, and I'm attacking with the kick into the body, and short elbow into the chest or into the throat, onto the clavicle, very good targets. Break the clavicle, it does impair the person's ability to use that limb. All right, thanks Brian. So we've covered some ideas around this. This hand, grab and pull. Bring them in. Go to watch in Abernathy. Grab them on, bring them closer. All right? Um, and draw them in so that you can really have that combined effect of their body being pulled into your arm, into your elbow, into your knee, into your headbutt. Okay. Yeah, there's headbutt somewhere. <laughs> we have gotten to there. We've done two of those. We change direction and we turn and then we get a technique that could look like this, could look like this, could look like this. And I alluded to it earlier by saying we've got these techniques that come across. So the classical bunkai for this that I remember from my childhood was just simply block let the attack go past you, slide yourself in, and bring that elbow straight up to the face. Hey. So let's go right side attack. He punches one, block. <laughs> let's go back, let's redo that. Punch one, block, step, elbow. Okay, can also be done if he decides to do a gyakuzuki. So he steps with his right, he punches with his left. Okay, block, hit. Okay, basically one, two, and you pick one that works for you. I like the idea we were working on just now that is again a throwback to the idea of getting around this arm and to pull this arm. So that arm action, if I let go for a second, Brian, does this and this. So imagine if I was, he's grabbing on, if I was to grab on and to pull. Look at just that one effect that it creates. So his double-handed grab, instead of dealing with the problem this way, I'm now affecting the problem this way. So I'm doing this effectively. Pull and hit. And that, I think, is a more practical application for this movement. Okay. And again, one would be more for grading. One would be more for your own personal exploration. We turn around after that, double open hand, read the newspaper block. Some schools have a very simple short block, some schools have a slightly more bigger open, large opening type block. And then after that, again, couple to it, either up or down, in, up, and again, kind of like this punch over the shoulder, I tend to think that these movements are coupled together. So the basic idea of this technique is bring their hands up. So now your partner is not grabbing onto your gi, he's grabbing onto both your hands, and you're effectively bringing your hands up. And in doing so, they're basically going to become loose. Okay, so he's got a grip. Obviously, I've got to worry about what's coming. So I'm going to move to the outside, and I'm going to attack. So I've done... Block, break free, and I've moved into the next movement. Okay, I like that. That's the punk I try and get my students to do as a slightly more advanced um, play for their brains. But the best idea is just pull it up, pull down, whack him on the nose. All right, so that's our basic punk The one I did before was slightly more advanced. He grabs on. Why is he grabbing on with two hands? What is coming next? What's to his advantage in doing this? Chances are, is he going to kick me, or he's going to knee me, or he's going to headbutt me? And I'm going to bring my hands up, and I like to cross my arms, so that means I cross his arms. And then I've redirected, and guess what? I'm out of that already. Now I could also be using this as that. Or... Um, I don't think the mic will like it. When I was a child, we did this one. 
And this always made me think of uh, my time at Sensei Chinin. And we did a lot of grab, sacrifice, throw. Um, I don't want to do a throw where I end up having Brian roll over me with the phone against my chest. Let's have a look if we can get it. So, so he grabs on, and I do one, two, three. This, grabbing here, getting to the inside, grabbing on. Then, instead of stepping forward, you step back. So, I'm just going to drop onto this leg. I'm going to pull him down, and I'm going to put my foot in his groin. And, yikes. <laughs> That was close. <laughs> All right, we're back. We're going to try that one again. Just we've created a bit more space so Brian doesn't go into the wall in the mirror. So Brian grabs on, and I said, you know, you're kind of clearing your hands or you're cranking free, sliding in, grabbing on, or grabbing on, grabbing on. And I'm going to step back or I'm going to sit back. And as I do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a trap there for his foot, foot in between and lift him over, and I create a sacrifice throw. You could do it a lot more close quarters. A lot of people like it really, really tight, grabbing on or hooking the arms, but the idea is just generally to grab and to sit, and immediately as you sit, what happens is your, your opponent goes down, and then you float them up using your leg. So much more advanced bunkai, much more down a tangent, per se, as you explore the ideas attached to this or this. All right, we get through another series of these movements, another punch, and then a turn, and the end of the kata, one single movement. So Brian attacks, one, move, strike. Basic as you can get. Get out the way, step, and strike. If you're in cat stance, use the cat stance to your advantage if you want. Okay? If you wish to go down a tangent, you could use it like that. Okay? Punch one. One, two. Slightly different variation. Kind of the same kind of principle. If uh, punch again. One. Doesn't have much power, but the moment I turn it, I start getting a little bit more power in the strike, uh, very much like a sword hand kind of block that you see being used by our friends from Shotokan. All right, hey, arigatou gozaimasu, Brian. I hope this covers a few basic ideas for Sisoshin Kata, as well as a few more advanced ideas in terms of Bunkai. Please, as always, remember, this should be something that creates some kind of stimulus for you, that allows you to think, allows you to go, ah, I wonder about this, and maybe allows you to get to a point where you can train and try it with a partner, somebody that you enjoy working with, and that you actually go and explore your kata and explore the potential meaning of your kata. And if you're more in line with very neat bunkai that becomes very pretty and is very showmanship orientated, like you see in the competitors, who are doing unison kata, cool. If it works for you and it gives you a little bit of inspiration, that's really nice. And uh, we're really, really stoked if that works for you. But if you happen to be a more pragmatic martial artist and you're looking for something a little bit more pragmatic, then obviously the moment you start getting your partner to grab on and hold with resistance to not just capitulate at a whim, then obviously you're going to start finding certain things are going to work. Some things aren't. Um, if you find yourself constantly being taken from behind and being choked by your partner because you're constantly putting yourself in a position where that can be easily done, you need to start thinking, how do you stop that from happening? And how do you create an opportunity for yourself to succeed in those situations where your opponent has gained ascendancy and you then start deviating a little bit from how the cutter looks maybe, and what the footwork or the hands are doing, but you take the essence of what the kata is about and you apply that essence. As always, do what your sensei says. Be inspired, hopefully, from our videos so that you can do something that makes your karate enjoyable and fun and that it gives you longevity. Have an awesome weekend. 
Arigato gozaimasu. Sayonara. Thanks for joining us. Don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a comment. Um, we're very stoked with a lot of the comments we've had. In the pipeline will be something along the lines of the traditional warm-up and morning routine, if you want to call it that. Um, somebody left a comment that they were looking for something on morning exercise or stretching, morning training, uh, something to help you just build your everyday life and your energy in your morning. It's in the pipeline. We'll have it for you in the next couple of weeks. Sayonara. Sayonara.